Good afternoon and welcome again to the group exhibit for hydrogen fuel cells and batteries here at the Hanover Fair 2017. Please everyone come on in, have a seat and enjoy complimentary beverage service. My name is Michael Sinclair and I will be the moderator for the next discussion. I'd like to remind you that audience questions are welcome at any time so please feel free to raise your hand and I'll bring the microphone to your table. Here to talk about solid oxide and electrolysis cells from DTU Energy. We have uh, the head of the section from DTU Energy, which is at the Technical University of Denmark. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Professor Anka Hagen. So Anka, your lab is based in Denmark. Could you please maybe start by uh, talking about the current political climate in Denmark for hydrogen technologies? Yeah. Um in general, you can tell that uh, Denmark has a very ambitious political goal. That is, by the year of 2050, Denmark wants to become independent on fossil fuels. So the challenges are to find technologies that provide electricity, heat and transport fuel, but not based on natural oil, gas and coal and so forth. So this is a very ambitious political goal and that is also the background and motivation for much of the technology development in Denmark. So uh, what are, I guess, you know, the question that occurs to me is what are your core areas of research and what capabilities do you have to support uh, those core, core areas? Yeah, so these uh, challenges uh, in Denmark are mainly realized by expanding substantially electricity production from wind energy. And here uh, the country is very much in the plan. We are about towards 50% of uh, electricity production by wind energy with all the following consequences. As you know, there are sometimes uh, periods with too much wind and then there are periods with not sufficient wind to supply electricity. And already now there are situations when the electricity cannot be used and the windmills have to be stopped. And this is of course a very unfortunate situation. And our department, D2 Energy, is uh, particularly tackling these challenges. So we develop the technologies that can solve these uh, challenges through new energy conversion and storage technologies. And this includes, for example, batteries, hydrogen storage, fuel cells, both PEM fuel cells, alkaline and solid oxide uh, cells, which are then used as a fuel cell or also electrolysis cells. So you're, you're uh, investigating, you're researching all of those different areas in your lab. It sounds like you've got a large, a large lab, a large number of researchers. Yes, uh, the whole department, we are about uh, 230 people. And uh, my subject today, solid oxide cells, uh, we are about uh, 40 full man years devoted to this area. And maybe I can explain very shortly how we are organized. We have competence centers where we develop experts, we acquire facilities and we develop methods and I would like to mention a few examples. We have an imaging section and there we have all our microscope and surface characterization capabilities focused in one section. We have many transition or scanning electron microscopes, we develop the right methodology and we have the expert in this area including surface science, surface uh, characterization methods. In another competence area, ceramic uh, engineering and science, we have the experts on slurries, powders, that are able of making, manufacturing ceramic devices. So they know how to tape cast and screen print, deposit layers for complex devices, and they have also the corresponding equipment. And my third and last example in this connection is applied electrochemistry. This is the section where we then test and try out all these devices we have developed and characterized by microscopy, for example. And in this applied electrochemistry section, we have a lot of test rigs for testing fuel cells, stacks, and so forth. We have alone 40 rigs where we can test solid oxide fuel cells. On the cell level, we have uh, three rigs where we can test stacks. 
We have rigs where we can test at high pressure towards 50 bar, so uh, really high pressure. And we also have a module tester and the ambition is that we test the fuel cells under conditions that are relevant for application. That means we test in the right operating cycles, including dynamic operating, including thermal cycling, including real fuel gases for the fuel cells, including uh, poisons or other impurities in the, in, in the fuel gases. And also this operation at high temperature reflects a real condition and in the electrochemistry approach, we try to find out in detail how the cells correspond to these uh, conditions, how long they last, and what are the limiting components so we can improve these. So you're speaking about uh, reliability testing. So I guess tell, elaborate a little bit more on how, uh, how you go about, or how technology providers go about validating the reliability of their, of their new designs. Yeah, this is uh, always... Um, the, the, the gap between laboratory and real conditions and we try to bridge this gap. So we have both uh, very uh, pure and clean and well-defined conditions where we uh, can characterize a cell and get very fundamental knowledge. On the other hand, we are also very interested to go the step towards application. So how would these cells then react in real environment? Uh, one example is we have uh, tested a fuel cell stack where we followed a real wind profile. So you can envisage uh, wind is blowing very randomly and sometimes not at all. And we followed precisely this uh, profile with a stack. And when uh, the wind was blowing sufficiently, we run in elect electrolysis mode and followed the power curve. And when the wind was stopping, we switched to a fuel cell mode and run in the electro uh, electricity production mode. So this is uh, also showing the capability of the solid oxide technology because you can use the same cell and running in both directions. This can be, for example, used for balancing of the load when you are, are connected to a wind turbine. So I come from a solar background and it's very difficult, I know, uh, you know from first-hand experience to predict how long uh, a piece of technology will last in the field. Uh, you know, you design a solar installation to last for 20 30, uh, or 30 years. Um, you know, you, I assume you have a similar problem here in fuel cells. So I, I guess what techniques do you use to, to accelerate the, the life testing of these devices um, in order to get meaningful results that you can extrapolate? Yeah, this is a very challenging question and many projects have been devoted to this challenge. In general, we do a very comprehensive durability testing and we have the capability of running cells or stacks for very long time. So currently we have data from yeah, 200 tests where we did long time testing on the typical state of the art cells where we run under similar to real conditions for a long time, do a online characterization and then see where the limits for operation are. Of course, you always want to know in a shorter time how a fuel cell that should last 10 years, so you don't want to wait 10 years for getting the output. So we, uh, we have analyzed yeah, almost 200 uh, test data we had from long-term tests and have tried to find patterns where we can accelerate the testing. And this is in an initial phase. We are part of a European project and have applied for more. But this is one of the hot topics and also latest achievements that we have identified conditions where we are able to accelerate degradation in relation to uh, real conditions, normal conditions. Great. And what are some of the other examples of research you have going on into solid oxide fuel cells? Uh, and some more examples are that we are continuously developing, improving the cells. And many of the applications in there of um, solid oxide cells you see are based on ceramic cells. That means the, the cell is based on ceramic materials. And these are quite well performing and durable technology at this point. We continuously improve it based on the understanding we have gained. We also continuously trying to improve the electrodes, getting them more stable, more tolerant. And uh, in particular, the durability and lifetime is one of our focus areas for this specific generation of cells. In addition to that, we have large focus on developing the next generation cells and many would suggest that these are metal supported cells so they are more robust you can bend them without breaking them they can be cheaper through to the metallic main components and they can also operate at lower temperatures 
And in this uh, development, there are only a few players in the world and we can say that we are among the top regarding performance. And we also had some breakthrough in the last year regarding durability, where we uh, can run these cells at high efficiency conditions. That's, of course, what you want to do in the real life. That means at high fuel utilization and we are convinced or, be, or we believe that this generation will be durable under these conditions. One of the benefits of solid oxide fuel cells is they're flexible in terms of what fuel source you can use. Would these new metal enforced cells have a similar, a similar properties? Yes, in fact, we have also shown and demonstrated that they are quite tolerant towards impurities like sulfur in, in a fuel. We envisage that we want to use the solid oxide cells in fuels that contain carbon. This is one of the main advantages of these fuel cells compared to low temperature PEM fuel cells. So they will enable that we can use existing infrastructure for fueling and also for storage because we can apply directly methane or other carbon containing fuels. We can also use uh, diesel, gasoline and maybe methanol. So synthetic fuels that are prepared based on renewable sources. In particular, my methane is quite interesting in in European connection uh, because methane is constituent of biogas and biomass, in particular waste biomass, is quite a big renewable source in Denmark and also other European countries. Very good. So uh, you have a booth um, just, hold on, just over there. It's E61-2, uh, so it's just uh, back this way. Um, why have you, well, first of all, actually, before I ask this question, are there any audience questions? Okay, that's, that's fine. So why have you come to the Hanover Fair? What is it that you're hoping to accomplish here? Yeah, so maybe I can uh, make a bit uh, a back loop as a university. So we are a technical university and our research spans, of course, from very fundamental to applied, particularly in, in this uh, technology area. We study materials on the fundamental level. We make fuel cells in one to a few hundred uh, numbers. We also uh, recently developed stacks and we also look how these stacks can be implemented in uh, energy systems. So we have a large range of activities over the whole uh, technology chain, you can say. So what are we doing here at this fair? Of course, we are very interested, or maybe it's not of course, but we are very interested that our ideas not um, remain in scientific articles, but that they come out to, to real life. So we. We are really interested that these become technologies that support future energy systems. And uh, interestingly, when uh, the Technical University was founded in the 19th century, the founder said it should be uh, the benefit for society. And that's actually our motto quite a lot in our department and also in, the, in, a, yeah, in our department, DQ Energy. So we uh, support com commercialization of the technologies we work with. And that we uh, do through uh, different activities. We uh, collaborate closely with industry, both in development projects and also on a commercial basis. We have a good track record, so we also can handle confidentiality. We have experiences with bilaterally collaborating with industry without any knowledge uh, coming outside our closed laboratories. We have also experiences in, for example, European projects, collaborate with industry. And we come here to the fair uh, now regularly because we uh, want to uh, meet new industries that could be interesting also in regard to components we want to use in stacks or in cell manufacture. We want to see if there are new players coming out. We want to prepare for new projects, either development projects or commercial projects. And precisely for the commercial side, we have established a test center which has the booth, which you will refer to, I'm, I'm sure. And um, in this center, we um, offer services to the industry, in fact, with all the research areas we are experts in. So if you want to know something about mechanical stability properties of your materials or components, we can make mechanical testing, we can make corrosion testing of steels, we can uh, carry out fuel cell testing, stack testing, and we uh, uh, can uh, throw in a lot of experiences, many years of experiences, high-edge equipment and experts. So you can benefit a lot from the many years of experience we have in the, in the field. So this is also a motivation coming here to um, offer our services directly to the industry. And furthermore, we always think ahead who could be um, 
partner in scaling up the technology, we usually, of course, start with a small fuel cell or a small battery. But how can we bring this into life? Is there any manufacturer or potential partner that can help us in scaling up? We can do a small step towards upscaling, but the final step towards hopefully thousands and tens of thousands. We um, expect we can find partners here at this fair. Excellent. So, as I mentioned, DTU Energy, uh, their booth is just over there at 60, uh, E61-2. Um, and uh, they, of course, would welcome you over there to ask uh, any follow-up questions that you might have. Uh, we're out of time for today, so if everyone could please join me in thanking uh, Professor Anke Hagen uh, for joining me on stage today. Up next on the public forum will be a conversation with Philip Smeets. He's the managing director of Hydrogenics Europe. Uh, the title of the talk is Renewable uh, Electrolytic Hydrogen, the Business Case and Early Market Adoption. So please stay in your seats and enjoy the next talk. <laughs>